I want to tell you a story. It's actually a fable. That means it's a story with a message. It's not uh, necessarily true. It's set about four or five hundred years ago in uh, North America amongst the Native American Indians. Now this story starts with a, a young boy, a young brave, who's one day going to be either one of the chief warriors, if not the chief himself. And he's living on the plains of central North America. A wonderful tribal family life, as tribal life often is. He's not raised by a, a mum and dad as we would know it, but in fact there's an old saying amongst the Native American Indians that no one child is raised by a, an individual, they are raised by the tribe. In other words, the community develops them and grows them and uh, teaches them their ways and what it's all about to, to be part of that tribe. When you get to a certain age, you go through rites of passage, initiation rites, tribal rites, and you become a man or you become a woman. This young man has aspirations and dreams, like many of the young, young men and young women of the tribe do. But this kid was a bit of a wanderer. He's a bit of a, an out there kind of guy. He's thinking about tomorrow, he's thinking about far away places. For example, he lived on the plains and way in the distance he could see the very, very faint shadow of a mountain range. And he's always longing, his thoughts were always to this mountain range, never to what he was doing right here and right now. Never to what was in front of him, the potential of what was there, but it was always this, this other place, this better, so-called better place. And he'd ask the, the older men and the older women in the tribe about this other place over in the distance. He said, what are they? And that explained to him that it was the mountain range. And he would say, look, I want to go there. I want to visit this place. And they'd say to him, no, 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 not yet. Not yet. You are not ready for this. It's not that you're not old enough yet. That's part of it. You've got to grow. You've got to mature, but you've got to be prepared to go to that place. There's a lot of dangerous things there. Yes, there's some wonderful views, there's some wonderful potential, but there's a very dangerous place and you need to be prepared for that. And you need to be ready, you need to, to be trained. But this kid, again, he knew better. I know what I want, I'm gonna get it in my time. He kept pushing the envelope and of course he was told no. So you can imagine what this kid does. He says, I'm gonna go anyway, so one day, as best as he understands to do, he prepares himself. He reckons he's got a clue, he reckons he's pretty smart. So he packs a, if you like, a cut lunch, puts on his uh, normal clothes, thinks it's gonna be a, a pretty short journey, and off he goes. Doesn't tell anybody where he's going. Anyway, after about a day or so, he finally gets there. He didn't realise how far away this actual place was. And when he gets there, he's kind of already a bit spent. But as he gets to the edge of this new adventure, He's kind of got no food left, but he's at the bottom of this range, this mountain range. And he looks up and he sees this new potential. So he starts to climb this mountain range. It's a bit of an incline, okay, he's using a bit more energy, but as he gets up, he notices it's getting colder. And the clothes he had on weren't prepared for this environment. He wasn't ready for this. As he goes higher, the air gets a bit thinner, so he's starting to struggle physically. And he's starting to feel very, very alone. Now by this time it starts to get dark. So not only is he alone, not only is he tired, not only is he without food and water, he's really quite frightened. And all of a sudden this great new adventure into the unknown world of, I know what I'm doing, I'm grown up, I can handle it, no one needs to tell me what to do. All of a sudden he's in a real mess. Now he's in the absolute middle of nowhere in territory he does not know. So there's no one or no thing there that he knows. Yet this voice comes out of nowhere. And he looks around and he's like, what's that noise? And he hears a voice say to him, will you help me? And he looks around a bit more, and then he notices, after a bit of a search, there's this thing on a rock. And he gets closer, he notices it's a rattlesnake, and he just reels back, automatic response. See, he's been trained all his life to know that rattlesnakes are not safe. In fact, they are very dangerous and are to be avoided at all costs. But this is a different situation. All of a sudden, in a completely different environment, alone, cold, tired, he's actually listening, think about it, listening to a rattlesnake. Weird, huh? And this snake says to him, will you help me? And of course, the boy, from his training, his experience, automatically says, what, help you? No way, he says. And the snake says to him, I, I'm, I'm stuck here. I'm supposed to be at the bottom of the mountain range. It's heading towards winter. It's cold, I'm cold-blooded. 
I'm starting to, to hibernate. And if I'm not in a safe place, I'm going to be vulnerable to birds. I'm going to freeze. It's not going to be good. I need to get to the bottom of the range. Will you help me? And of course, the boy's going, no, you're a rattlesnake. He says, I need your help. He says, no. Anyway, goes back and forth. The boy says to the rattlesnake, listen, if I t get anywhere near you, you're going to bite me. And the rattlesnake says, no, 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 no. I need you. And it looks like you need me because you're just as alone as I am. So if you pick me up, put me in your jacket, and help me get down tomorrow morning, help me get down to the bottom of the hill, I will show you the way back to your camp. Now, two days ago, this would never, ever have been an option to this kid. Wouldn't have even heard the rattlesnake, as it were, talking to him, let alone having a conversation, let alone even thinking about picking this thing up. But now, in this very vulnerable place, this is an option. So, again, reluctantly, against all his better judgment, he leans towards it tentatively, puts his hand out, brings it back, notices the snake doesn't go in. So after a couple more goes, he gets right up close, he actually touches the snake, and the snake doesn't move. It doesn't strike him, it doesn't bite him, it doesn't cause him any pain. In fact, its snake gently wraps itself around his arm, and it's kind of a bit comforting, there's a touch. And as he puts it under his vest, this Indian boy feels a snake warm up and that in turn adds to him as well. And all of a sudden, he's got company. Night, fall comes, they stay huddled in a rock, cold, frightened, but he's got this snake with him, in reality completely alone. But he feels a little bit better. Next morning, wakes up after a very, very bad night's sleep. Tired, hungry, cold, scared, but he's got this snake with him. Anyway, the snake starts to guide him down the hill. And as he goes down the hill, he starts to see a bit more familiar territory. He's been here before. And as he starts to see the bottom of the foothills again, he starts to go, oh, wow, I kind of know where I am. And they finally get to the bottom of the foothills, back to the plains, the start of the plains. And way off in the distance, he can see a puff of smoke, very faint puff of smoke. And he knows, that's my tribal community. He kind of breathes a sigh of relief. Oh, I've got some familiarity. I'm going to head towards home. And he looks at the snake, pulls the snake out from under his garment, the snake uncurls himself. And the boy puts the snake on the ground. He says to the snake, thank you. Without hesitation, the snake rears up and strikes with all its might right into this boy's leg, both fangs into his calf and injects all its venom, retracts and sits back. And the kid, he just goes, looks at his leg and, and with shock he sort of staggers back and falls down and goes, but, but what, have you, what have you done? What have you done? The snake says, that's obvious, isn't it? And then the boy says to the snake, you promised you wouldn't hurt me. You promised you would not bite me. You would show me the way back down the hill. And the snake simply said to the boy these last words before the boy actually faded into a coma and died. He says, you knew what I was before you picked me up. I'm a rattlesnake. This is what we do. This is all we do. And the boy dies with those words in his head. You might ask the question, <laughs> what in the heck's that got to do with alcohol and other drugs? The gentleman who originally told that story was a, a chief of a North American Indian tribe. And he told that story about alcohol specifically, but also related to other drugs. He went back to say the boy was in a, a wonderful community. He had a good, caring family and community around him who had good values. They had a solid world view. In other words, they understood the world through a specific set of meanings and understandings. The meaning was clear. They had purpose within their meaning. They had identities within that purpose, and they had values to back those up and patterns and models to follow. So this young man could grow and become all the potential that that tribe had for him. But as this young man stepped outside of that space, he did his own thing, his own way, but he didn't have all the experience and the wherewithal to actually cope with all that life can throw at him. And as so many sociologists have said today, that kind of burden to create your own meaning, your own purpose, your own identity is something that the individual human psyche can't really handle. And this Indian chief went on to relate the fact that this boy, when he was alone and when he was vulnerable and when he was outside of that space of what he knew, 
All of a sudden, that fear and that insecurity and that discomfort and that pain and that loneliness and that isolation all started to wear on him to the point where he actually, not just contemplated, but actually picked up a rattlesnake. And he related that to alcohol and other drugs. When we're desperate, when we're hurting, when we're lonely, when we're disconnected, when our, we don't have meaning in our lives, when our identity is not sure, then we just want to medicate. We just want to make that yuck feeling go away. And so we take alcohol, thinking it'll just be in my little comforter for the moment. It'll just take the edge off. It'll just make me feel better for the moment. I'll put it down later when I don't need it anymore, when I'm back in familiar territory, when I've figured it all out, I'll put it down. But as that story so powerfully revealed, this stuff has one end in itself. It's not something you just pick up, play with and put down. This stuff bites. Alcohol, particularly in our culture, has got a real hold. But other drugs are starting to have some real issues as well. You don't play with this stuff and walk away unscathed. And people who say they do, don't. I think one of the scary things for us in our culture right now is that we've disconnected from real meaning sustainable meaning. We've disconnected from real purpose. And we've also failed to actually develop and create real identity, things that we need as human beings to, to function well. And because we don't have the community, we don't have the family function that's supportive and nurturing, then our values are all over the place. And all of a sudden, we don't know why anymore. All we know is that we just don't feel right. And we want to make ourselves feel better and pretty much do anything to get that feeling. But unfortunately, for the most part, that only adds to the problems and the dysfunction that we experience. It's time we as a culture started to look at what is it that's causing us to play with rattlesnakes. We have to go outside the box, the box that often our culture wants to put us in. The culture that keeps telling you that this is the way it is. Consume, have fun, party hardy, there's nothing else but now. That kind of box is very limiting. Some people call that a freedom box. But like that young boy we saw in the story, he went from an incredible context into a very small box of his own world doing his own thing. And when he was in that space, he ran out of options really quick. You need to be in the bigger context. You need to be looking beyond what the market throws at you as an option for life and living and experience. There's much more to this. There's a bigger picture. There's stuff that's beyond you. There's stuff that's bigger than you that you need to understand. And so much of our culture won't let you look at that. That's why we need to stop playing the game. That's why we need to look outside of this currently well-constructed consensus and look at some of the harder questions of life. Why are we here? What's it all about? Where are we going? Those questions need to be answered and answered well and in a right context so we can at least have better options to make better choices and stop therefore medicating ourselves into oblivion because we don't know what to do next. You get the information, you call the shots, you make the choice and you be the agent of change in the culture.